We'll go ahead and get started. Good morning. My name is Cassie Minicus. I am a contract specialist with the TexMass program, um, statewide procurement division. So can I just ask you to have a raise of hands who all are vendors today? Interested in becoming? OK, good. So that's, that's the bulk of my audience. Um, so basically, what I'm going to talk about today is a little bit of background on the agency. Um, and then we'll focus on the TexMass program, what it is. And then I'm going to take you through the steps of what an offer packet is, what you need to submit in order to become a vendor, um, and what all those steps look like through the award, and then what happens after that. Um, so the statewide procurement division, uh, there's a big typo there, is a division of the Comptroller of Public Accounts. Um, we're the state's purchasing manager. Uh, so we award and manage hundreds of statewide contracts on behalf of over 200 state agencies and 1,600 co-ops. Um, so we are committed to, to awarding hub vendors as well. We definitely promote that. Um, there's three different types of statewide contracts. So the first is going to be term contracts um, that are competitively awarded and uh, require that you go through our online purchasing Texas Smart Buy website uh, to purchase items. I will go over and show what that Smart Buy looks like a little bit later, a high level overview of that. Um, the next kind is managed. Um, these are more unique uh, uh, for wanting unique items uh, for, for certain state agencies. And the last is uh, TexMass. So the Texas Multiple Award Schedules um, they're an alternative method um, that require a current base contract that was either awarded by the federal government or a local government. It needs to be current, so it can't be expired. Um, and so that's the one we're going to focus on today. So what is a TexMass contract? TexMass, again, it stands for Texas Multiple Award Schedules. It adapts existing contracts to fit the need of the needs of the state of Texas. Okay, so um, it needs to have a base contract that was awarded by the federal government, which is the most common that we see, GSA contracts, and I'll explain a little bit more about that um, here in a minute, or another local government, say it's the city of Houston. But again, these contracts need to be current and not expired. Um, we need to know that the base contract was awarded using a competitive per, uh, process. So, for instance, with the GSA, that I want to say at least three, maybe four out of five of our base contracts were awarded through GSA. We work with that a lot. Um, but again, we do accept local government contracts as base contracts as well. Um, but with the GSA, we can be sure that it was competitively um, awarded. So for instance, if you're using a base contract like the city of Houston and it was you know, only advertised in, in a small newspaper to 200 people, we can't show that that was competitively awarded, right? So that's going to be a big requirement. Three, it needs to be adaptable to the laws of the state of Texas. I will talk a little bit about um, the state government code 2254 and some of the things we don't allow to be on a text mess contract. Um, and again, it has to be active. Um, and then the last part, um, we want the TexMass contracts to take advantage of the most favored customer pricing. In GSA, the base contract, um, the federal supply, we can be sure that those are the most favored pricing. And something that I do as a contract specialist and my team members do is when we have uh, an offer packet come in for a, a TexMass award, we need to make sure that the pricing that you guys want to offer through our online purchasing system, Texas Smart Buy, is at least the same as your base contract, not higher. It can be lower, right? So we, the TexMass contracts, we're, we're offering the most favored customer pricing. Um, really important. Um, I've been talking about the GSA. stands for the General Services uh, Administration. Um, and they award contracts um, through a competitive procurement process for over 20 different schedules. Um, so a schedule uh, refers to the type of commodity or service that's being offered. For example, 71 refers to furniture. Um, and so we know that if you're submitting a text mass offer packet based on a 71 schedule that you're going to be offering those items, right? It needs to fall into that category. Um, and if you can go ahead and click on that link, this is a link to the GSA website 
a schedule list. I don't know how many, I can't remember exactly how many there are. Um, but if you can see kind of right here, if you can scroll down, I mean, we see a lot of, let's see, like, for instance, hardware and superstore, one of our contracts that's a huge, huge one is Granger. So that would be their base um, supply schedule through GSA that they would submit. Um, and this is just a list if you want to scroll down. Um, like 71 is furniture, that's a common one. So some recent changes in the TextMass program. Um, in the last two years, we've revamped the, the process for intake. It used to be a little bit um, relaxed in terms of what we, we require you to submit. Now we're a lot more stringent. Um, so we've reduced the number of vendors. We really want, um, and when I take, when I take you through the, the documents that, that we require you submit for, for an award, um, one of the big ones is going to be your catalog of items. We, we require it to be submitted in an Excel template. And we really want your descriptions and things to be really good, to use NIGP codes, things that we know, right? We want to help the end user, the purchaser, as well as the vendor, and us as kind of the liaison, to help facilitate that process and, and get it out there so people know how to find your items, how to purchase your items. Um, so that's really what we're trying to do in these recent changes. So we require that you have good long descriptions and short descriptions and NIGP codes and, and, and know who your user is so that they can find your items, right, and purchase those items. That's really what we're trying to do. Um, we do expect you to advertise and market for yourself. You know, we, we, can, we have a list of people that use our, our Texas Smart Buy, but we really expect you to go out there and, and have people that want to use our program and, and show them how, you know, show them how to use our e-procurement site. Um, and then we do also require that TextMass vendors um, have at least $25,000 in annual sales to stay on, right? That lets us know that you are, you are using us, you are advertising and marketing. Part of that, sometimes I have vendors that um, send in offer packets and say, you know, we are struggling a little bit to find uh, potential customers. So, um, TextMass is used by a combination of state agencies and then local governmental entities. A lot of our repeat um, vendors already have interest. They have people that have been using it and want to use it again. If you're a new uh, submission, there we do have on our website, if you want to pull up the agency, it's a list of state agencies and then we have a, a you know, list of purchasing current members. So this is on our website. Again, all the links I provide are through our Comptroller website. Um, so this is a list of state agencies that can purchase through the, the Texas Smart Buy um, website. And then, if he, yeah. and then he, this will be a link to the uh, list of current purchasing members. And you can go through and it's listed by category. Um, so again, those are some good places to look um, when you are submitting an offer packet. So again, we kind of just discussed this, but who can buy from TextMass contracts? Um, so we require for state agencies, they need to first consider set-aside set aside contracts, which are the Texas Correctional Institute and Texas uh, Institute of Blind and Handicap and term contracts first. Um, and then for local governments, there's not a requirement. Um, you can just go ahead and, and go on to the Smart Buy website and, and buy from a TextMess contracts. Um, again, the biggest thing with the TextMess purchase method is the best value determination. Uh, so again, when we, we see those offer packets come in and we're taking it through the process to award, we want to make sure that you're offering the best pricing. Right, it's not higher than your base contract um, and that it uh, matches that. Another, we do have the purchasing manual on our website. Um, SVD recommends that for contracts that exceed 50,000, the agency submit a pricing request to at least three vendors um, included in that category um, or all the vendors if it's less than three. Um, and the last thing is that, again, we do verify that pricing. Um, so a couple more high-level things, and then I'm going to get really into the offer packet and how to be awarded a TextMass contract. Um, 
So again, why use a text mass contract? It's the most favored pricing. Um, it also takes out the extra step in searching for those goods and services for the, for the end user. And um, it can expedite the process um, for somebody that's a returning customer, right? Um, so again, TextMass today, uh, we've made the process a lot more stringent. Um, and you can find, and I'll show you a little bit later on on our website, um, where it says Offer Packet. It's, all, it's a list of all the documents we'll require you to submit and the ones that um, you can download from there too. Um, so to get started with, with an, um, an offer packet, and does everybody understand when I say offer packet for, for an award? Okay, good. Um, so elements of a good text mass contract, um, again, you're going to be required to submit base contract documents along with what we require, the, the text mass documents. So um, in order to have a text mass contract, you have to have a base contract that's not expired. So one that's, that's going to be live for another three or four years. Um, competitive pricing, uh, also that it was competitively bid, as I, as I mentioned in the beginning. And then, um, you know, it, it always helps, too, if you have co-ops or local governments or, or interested agencies who, um, you know, want to purchase through the text mass program. If you can provide letters of justification, that's always helpful, too. Um, Again, I'll talk about the catalogs in depth a little bit later, but we want to make sure that, I talked about Granger earlier. Granger has millions and millions of items, and rather than submitting you know, every nut and bolt, you know, and just kind of throwing it up there on our site and hoping for someone to kind of throw a dart and find an item, we rather that you really spend the time on these items that you know people are wanting to buy, agencies want to buy, there's interest to buy, that you know, sell the most and make sure that you focus on those good descriptions and good NIGP codes. Um, that, and then we also, pictures are also helpful. So if you think of, you know, Amazon, we've all been on Amazon.com, you know, when you search for an item, the item that pops up, if it has pictures and reviews and good descriptions and it's clear, you know, we're more likely going to want to go to that item and, and purchase that. So we're just asking that you make these, um, item searchable in a way that the end user, like you or I, would, you know, be able to understand what it is. Um, so, let's see. Um, this is pretty high level, but um, I did want to mention that Texas, Texas Government Code 2254 does exclude us from awarding certain um, professional and consulting services. So these are the types that we, that we disallow, right? Accounting, um, we see a lot of engineering and that's one that, that uh, we struggle, we, we have to identify, but we do award prefabricated buildings, but if it requires any uh, engineering on site in order for that product to be fully um, you know, purchased and procured, then we, we disallow it, right? It has to be a standalone thing. It, it can't have any, any consulting or prof professional services. Um, so the GCI. So once I've received all the offer packets as a contract specialist, I'll put together, it's kind of a backbone, high-level document of um, the main parts of your contract. Um, and so it's a page on our, on our Texas Smart Buy website. Um, if you want to go to that example, yeah. I'm going to pull up an example, and it's basically the specifics, the notes of your contract that will be found live on our website uh, once an award has been made. So it'll go through, this is just an example, um, the description, the type, the date it was awarded. Um, this is a, an example of a federal GSA contract that we will refer to. Talk about renewals, purchase orders, if you want to go down a little bit to contract specific notes. Um, and right here, so if you can even, this is a link here. And what we'll do is we'll link it to your base contract so purchasers are able to compare pricing to, right? Because again, we want to make sure that you're, you're offering the most favored pricing. 
So this is one of those kind of high level parts, but I wanted to, to mention it. Um, yeah, perfect. <clears throat> okay, so going to offer packets. So I'm going to talk about the base contract documents that are required and then the text mask uh, documents that are required. Um, for the base contracts, we, we want to see your base contract award, right, um, signed. We want to see the most current modifications. So if you had pricing adjustments, increases, or um, maybe it was, uh, um, yeah, like special prices that were offered. We want to make sure that those are the most uh, currently approved. We want to see the original solicitation. So whether that's from GSA or a local government, it needs to be that original solicitation. And we want to see your response to it, the original response. right? Um, we also want to see the base contract terms and conditions. And we want to make sure that for the last 12 months, um, there was at least $25,000 in sales. Um, I talk about, so I said we see a lot of base um, contracts through GSA. So uh, they have a standard form 1449 that we look for, standard form 30 for price modifications. Um, and then I just, if you will go to that link, this is again, you need me to go forward. This is a link to the offer packet documents on our website. So I think there's seven here. Um, talks about, again, base contract with at least a year left, um, the Smart Buy catalog, which I'll talk a lot about here in a minute, um, and all of those base documents that we require. I think one thing, too, with um, coming out here and speaking with some of you today, what we're trying to do is Rather than try and figure out this on your own, we really want you to, to reach out to us um, with questions. And uh, we, we even, you know, we'll meet with you if you want to come in and, and talk about all of this. And we hope that you'll call us and ask us any questions rather than try and figure it out and then have to resubmit. I think that causes a lot of time in between that, that's really unnecessary. So then moving forward, we'll move to, these are, uh, SPD um, require text mass documents. So um, from that website, there's a vendor prepared contract checklist. This is something new we've revamped, um, and it's about two pages. We require that you, it's a lot of good information for us, high level. When I'm uh, scrubbing an intake uh, packet, I know I can go straight there to look for your company's legal name, legal address, franchise tax number. Um, so it's really important that you fill it out and sign it. Um, we also have uh, prepared uh, terms and conditions. That's our contract. It's about 24 pages. Um, it'll be one of the last things that I'll, we'll send out to you. You'll your, your company will sign, and then the deputy comptroller will sign, um, and then we will send you a copy once you've been awarded. Um, and then the last thing is the Smart Buy catalog. This is where we run into the most issues and the most problems. Um, but again, what I'm, we're hoping is that you all will reach out to us um, and we can walk you through that catalog rather than trying to you know, get through some of those problems on your own. So um, walking through company name, um, comptroller, the, the contract description, you can use what GSA uses or um, is it hardware, is it furniture? Um, we'll want you to put your base contract number. Um, if you've held a previous text mass contract, again, this is a place where I could quickly find that, go into our system, and confirm that you did have at least 25,000 in sales annually last year. And that hits a check for me on my list of things I need to go through when I'm doing these steps to award, right? So this document's super important internally for us, but also you, but I mean, I can have this open in one window and I'm running all the checks that I need to do you know, uh, checking through my list when I'm awarding a contract. Um, if you keep going, a little bit of important notes. Um, again, these are the base documents that are required that we've been talking about. Um, then it asks if you'll have dealers. Again, a lot of our furniture contracts have dealers. Um, and then also for dest um, delivery, we want to see that it's either yes, prepaid and included or prepaid and allowed. Uh, we don't allow origin. Um, if 
you keep going, um, then this is just kind of information too. When they use the, the online ordering system, we'll want you to put um, the PO email um, for you guys, accounts receivable, and then you'll sign it. So I just, that's just a really important document um, that, that I refer to a lot when I'm doing scrubbing um, your offer packet. Okay, so um, again, and then I'm gonna take you through our Smart Buy catalog, that's, that's the biggest one. Um, okay, and then, so that first base documents are required, the text mass documents are required, and then we have some optional ones. Um, so we have what's called a vendor prepared form 1295. If your company's sales over the entire uh, term are anticipated to exceed a million dollars, um, then we will require you to go to the TEC, Texas Ethics Commission, and fill out a 1295. Um, pretty simple step. We will email you and explain that to you. Um, and then dealers, again, are optional too. If you do have dealers, we do have two documents that we will send you or you can download, download from our website that will require you to, to fill out. We just need their tax um, ID information. And, and then, of course, you, you as the contractor will be responsible for those dealers, but we'll need to be made aware. Um, uh, so vendors can be uh, hub or non-hub. Again, we, we do um, we do use uh, both kinds. Um, and then there's these letters of authorization and acceptance, these templates I was just speaking about that we were required to have on file. Um, you can find those on our website, as I mentioned. We're currently revising to make it one document instead of two, but currently it's two. Um, and then the last thing, we have a, um, what's called the ECSM, Executive Correspondence Systems Management. It's a document that we will send you in the notice of award email that we require you to fill out. Um, it's pretty short. Um, and then we'll just have on our team, the communications people review that um, for you to use in advertising your new text mass contract, whether that's on your own website or, or some other place. Um, so I'm gonna talk about Smart Buy and vendor catalogs. Um, if you just go to that first link. How many of you are familiar with the Texas Smart Buy online ordering system? Okay, great. So this is, um, if you just wanna go and type in up at the top, right in that search bar, just type in chair and hit enter, please. <laughs> so this is, um, you can see there's information over here. There's term that I talked about. Uh, this is the contractor, um, but over here, if you like, so when I talk about your catalogs, this is gonna be an item in our <coughs> online uh, ordering system. Here's the information that'll show up. It'll reference a text mass or a term contract. There's the price. Um, so this is like high level what it looks like to find vendors items in our website. Um, again, part of those required documents are, is going to be what we call a smart by catalog. And it's our, it's an Excel template and it, it outlines in that document that you can download from our website it all the field requirements. But again, what's difficult about this process is, for instance, like say it's Granger or another vendor and you have your price list or you know your um, catalog of all your items, we need you to fit that into our template and that's where we can run into some problems. There's a lot of formalities there that, uh, again, if you call and have questions, we can help you format that into our template. Uh, we still just need you to provide your products, you know, supplier part numbers, um, and pricing, and then we need to verify it, right? Those are the most high-level important things. And then if you'll open, okay, so then you'll download our catalog, let's see, here. So this is what it looks like. Um, and so anything in red is required for you to fill out, obviously your company's name, um, supplier part number. We all need these to be unique. It's just a requirement um, that we have. We want the prices that you offer here. 
Um, your base contract prices will be what you offered in your base price list that you submitted, and we will verify those prices. Um, then this is kind of internal unit of measure. Um, each or box or whatever it happens to be. Column H is your NIGP codes. Are a lot of you familiar with NIGP codes or do you use them? Okay, good. Those can be downloaded. A list of those can be found on our website. Um, sometimes when you have submissions of catalogs with 200,000 items, going through and finding codes for all those items can be hard. But again, I just really, you know, we really want to um, focus on the, the items you really want and smart by. Um, and then again, column K for the web store display name. Um, that's like, again, when you go into Amazon and you search for something and it's that linkable, you can go into that item. So you really want to make those names good. You know, you want to make those, so if I see those when I'm searching in Texas Smart Buy, I want to know right when I see that blue um, web store display name, oh, this is a leather chair or this is a, you know, um, red ball pen point or ballpoint pen or however. Um, if you'll scroll over a little bit to the right, um, then we have the short description and long description, so column L and M. Again, the short will be right underneath that web store display name, and then if you click into that item, you'll be able to see the long description. I just think those descriptions, again, like, like any end user, the more information that's out there that's clear um, and explains what the item is, that's going to help me and, and probably make me more interested in buying those items. Um, right? If it's, it's the easier identifiable it is, um, the better. And then uh, there's green columns. Those are options, right? So we don't require you to put pictures, but you can. Um, and again, we can help you with some of that. We have a pretty good data team um, that helps with some of those that stuff too. And then the last part um, is just for internal use. So I ran through that kind of quickly, and I hope that was a little bit... Um, you could understand some of it, but this is probably our biggest area where we run into um, just it's difficult maybe for the vendors to like fit their product and price list into our template, um, but we can help with some of the formalities of that. So again, I listed out here um, the required fields, but all that information is in that Excel file template it's on our web page for you to download. There's going to be a tab at the bottom that says field requirements, which are the instructions for how to fill this template out. Then the second tab is going to be where you fill in your information, and the third is going to say unit of measure, where you can reference uh, what's acceptable. There's probably 30 or so unit of measures in there. Um, but again, I know from looking at these every single day, from scrubbing them, from running formulas, from trying to make it fit from working with vendors how difficult this really can be i mean uh, we, we spend hours days weeks looking at these catalogs and, and trying to make them work you know i have vendors where they just don't have unique supplier part numbers maybe they they don't have unique descriptions and things like that that we really kind of have to come up with a case-by-case -case basis on how to make your product and priceless fit into our template and how it can really be found by the end user and accessible and how it works is really what we're trying to do is make that communication and, and really make these items searchable and everybody sort of informed on how to use our online ordering system and, 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 and all of that. Um, so, yeah, we just really promote and hope that you'll call if you have problems filling out this template and it's easier for us to you know, help you from day one than to try and go back and fix things. Um, again, this is kind of um, some of those requirements um, in that first tab, like I said. So it'll be those red uh, columns that we require you to fill out and these are some of the requirements that make it difficult. For instance, your supplier part numbers uh, can't be duplicative in nature. They need to be unique. Um, we want the short descriptions to be unique. Again, this is just for the end user. It makes it more of a, um, a, a better experience, right? A better purchasing experience. Um, 
your base contract pricing, I run into this a lot too. They may be higher or lower, they don't match your base price list that you submitted. And I need to make sure that those uh, reflect the same thing, right? Um, the Texas Smart Buy prices cannot exceed your base price times that admin fee. Um, it can't even be rounded up. It needs to be point, you know, 0.40 or 5.2. It, it can't go higher or lower. Um, your NIGP codes are really important. And then again, another requirement that's just kind of on our end that makes it difficult but is required. Um, your supplier part numbers can't be over 30 characters. Your web store display name 99. Um, so these are just some of the, the requirements that can slow it down or if you call in the beginning can make it a little bit easier. Um, again, I asked if people were familiar with the NIGP codes. Uh, there's a list on our website that can be downloaded. Yeah, if you'll open that up for me. Um, it's really important. So um, if you will go to Alpha Index, I think, for keyword search. Um, well, so you'll find that you'll, they'll need to be, um, you can search chair, an easy one. If you'll go down, they need to be five digits and they can't end in zero, zero. So you'll go through and, and, um, and just pick those codes uh, specific to the items in your catalog. Um, and again, if you want to call in with questions, we can sometimes help um, slim down or trim down that process as well. Um, yeah, if you'll go back to the PowerPoint from current. Awesome. Thank you. Um, okay, moving forward. Um, I just wanted to focus high level again on some of the base contract uh, documents. Um, some of the information that we're looking for for that GCI that I talked about in the beginning that we will publish on our website. Um, the minimum and maximum order dollar amounts. Uh, we're looking for the FOB is destination versus origin, any volume discounts, the amount of delivery days. If it's a range, we'll want to put the highest. We know that it at least falls within 15 or 30. We want to put in 30. Um, any warranty provisions. Um, I kind of just walked you guys through the, the Texas Smart Buy demonstra demonstration, so um, we kind of know what that looks like. Um, again, we are looking to work with hubs and hub vendors, um, so that's always a good thing. Um, I did want to show you f also um, on the Smart Buy website, there's an icon of um, a flag next to hub vendors. So a lot of times purchasers will want to work with hub vendors and that lets them know um, that you are. Here's a picture of what that looks like in our online ordering system. Post-award expectations. I did want to talk about something that we're doing um, now that we haven't done before, which is that once I've uh, scrubbed all your oops, offer packet documents and awarded a contract, I will send an email with a notice of award. Um, then you will be assigned a contract manager who will be in charge of that contract for the life of the TextMass contract, which is five years. So we're gonna make a phone call to you all and try and um, open up the communication of um, you know, who's in charge of that, who the vendor is and who the purchaser is and what we expect you guys to do in terms of advertising and any questions you might have for us and how to promote that contract. Right? We wanna bring awareness and we want to help answer any questions. Um, so, your, uh, what happens after we've awarded it and we've had this conversation, um, we will send your catalog, right, that Excel template to our data management group for upload. They will do their technical part um, and you'll receive a system generated notification via email that your contract's live, that your items are out there on Smart Buy for purchase. Um, and then throughout the life of that contract, if you have price adjustments, uh, modifications, like I talked about, or you have new dealers, or you have new product images, you'll work with that contract manager to, um, to make those changes in the online ordering system. Um, their email address is the main one that you can reach them for any of those changes. Um, and then this is my uh, group, so it's myself, 
and three other contract specialists that do receive these intake, intake packets. Um, my team lead, Jason Ochoa, and our manager, Jared McCrossin. That's our main phone line, email, and the comptroller website. 